don't want to talk too loud, Dad. I want Katie to be surprised. Well, I think it's a fine idea, Rob, but uh, <laughs> to tell you the truth, I never heard of celebrating a fourth week wedding anniversary. <laughs> what are you going to get her? A gold charm for her bracelet with a diamond in it. Well, I think you're supposed to wait 75 years for your diamond anniversary. And besides, uh, how can you afford to buy her a diamond? Oh, well, you can hardly see this one. Then it's got a flaw in it. That's why I'm getting it for 30 bucks. Oh. Well, then you're not uh, breaking with tradition. I'm going to have the charm inscribed. May this anniversary be filled with joy. Well, that's a very nice sentiment, Rob. Well, I'll see you tonight. Okay. Goodbye. Oh, hi, Ralph. You spent $30 on an anniversary present every four weeks. You're going to go broke before you even have $30. It has to be a secret, Ern. Oh, don't worry. I won't blab. Not even a chip. Blab about what? Well, Robbie's giving Katie a charm for the wedding anniversary. Why so soon? You've got almost a whole year to go. It's her fourth week anniversary. How mushy can you get? Hey, will you two please shut up? Okay. Good morning, Kearney, Chip. How are my brothers-in-law? Fine, Katie. When she says that, I feel so old. Boy, how did you get most of your classes in the afternoon? Well, maybe she told her teacher she was going to have a baby. <laughs> Why not? Well, not yet, anyway. Let's see tonight, honey. We're eating dinner at six on the button tonight. That is, if your dad's plane gets in from Fresno on time. And if it doesn't, we're still eating at six o'clock. Okay. So long. Bye. Here you guys, for your lunch. Got your eggs boiling. Seven and a half minutes. <laughs> Might as well eat golf balls. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad Mr. Douglas... Dad, I keep forgetting he's my father-in-law. Anyway, I'm sure glad he's not going to be out of town Sunday. Why's that? Robbie and I are going to celebrate our fourth week wedding anniversary. Hey, congratulations. May this anniversary be filled with joy. <laughs> Ernie, I didn't know you were so poetic. Well, I didn't make it up. That's what Robbie's going to have engraved on that gold charm he's buying for your fourth week wedding anniversary. <laughs> You sure fixed that surprise. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just slipped out. Well, I'm glad it did. I just intended to buy him a necktie. Well, a necktie's good enough. But he doesn't wear them much anyway. It's a dance. When he has a heavy date, he can't have them anymore. <laughs> Not good enough. Not compared to a gold charm. Eggs are ready, Katie. Solid as a rock. Coming. Your mouth is getting bigger and bigger. I can't help it. I'm grown. <laughs> so what if he is buying you a big present? He's your husband, isn't he? But it doesn't seem right. I'm going to get him a dollar fifty necktie. Okay. You want to feel better? I'll lend you fifty cents. You can buy him a two dollar necktie. <laughs> Seven and a half minute eggs. Eat them before they turn to powder. You don't understand. This is very important. It's the first present we've bought each other since our wedding. I'm going to buy him something very, very special. You got something in mind? Well, he was talking about a Swiss calendar watch. They're on sale at Newcomb's. Swiss calendar watch? What's that? Well, they're wonderful. They not only tell you the time, they tell you what day it is. Well, if Robbie don't know what day it is, at his age, he never should have got married. I have to raise the money. Mm, soon. Uh, pick yourself a long shot at San Anita. There's a horse called Stumblebump. I'm looking to want out for a part-time job. Hi, Rob. Hi, Tom. Did you bone up on our calculus exam last night? No, no, I couldn't concentrate. I battled all night with Ethel. Now, how a wife can go out and deliberately buy herself a bikini when she knows I hate them is beyond me. You hate bikinis? Well, on Ethel, I do. Well, I mean, I don't like every guy and his brother ogling my wife every time we go to the beach. Oh, I see what you mean. You should save your fights for more important things, though, Tom. How long have you been married, Rob? Uh, three weeks? No, almost four. What I'm saying, Tom, is you should save your steam for the basic things. Like, uh, oh, her not telling the truth, or fudging on the budget, you know, stuff like that. Oh, well, we fight about those things, too. I tell you, Rob, you haven't been married long enough to know all the things that can come up. Now, when you've been together for five months, like Alpha and I have, then we'll talk. <laughs> Just the same, Tom. I know Katie's every move. She knows my principles, 
And we never make a move the other doesn't know about. Part-time waitress wanted. Pink Azalea Restaurant, Warnall Park. I know the place. It's lovely. Well, it's a perfect suggestion. <laughs> <clears throat> Hope you didn't get lipstick on my collar. You know, I got enough laundry to do. <laughs> well, come on. You finish your breakfast, and I'll drive you over there. I got some shopping to do. We do a big luncheon business. Uh, that's why we've had to put on some uh, extra girls. May I ask about the salary? Well, hey, mister, what is this poulet à l'estragon? A poulet la estragon. That's roast chicken. Four fifty? If the chickens knew that, they'd go on strike. <laughs> Please, Uncle Charlie. Uh, the uh, salary is not much, but uh, you should pick up about $10 a day so on tips. Oh, that sounds marvelous. When do you want me to start? Be here at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes, Mr. Franson. Come on, Uncle Charlie. Two eighty-five for a hamburger? They must come on very big buns. <laughs> Why don't you come in and try one sometime? I don't eat nobody's food but my own. That way, if I get poisoned, I'm always near an antidote. Hey, Rob, did you get the note from Tom Bridges I left for him by the phone? What note? Oh, I guess I forgot to write it down. He said he'd be at the bowling alley tonight in case you want to join him. You nearly finished, honey? Yeah, hey, honey, uh, do you want to go bowling with Tom and Ethel tonight? I'd love to. But he said no women. He and Ethel had a big fight. Fight? About what? Nah, he didn't want to talk about it. Boy, am I glad I'm single. <laughs> I know what happened. It was Ethel's fault. She did one of the most unethical things I've ever heard of. What's that? Well, she went out and bought a bikini without even telling him. What's wrong with that? Well, she knew he didn't want her to. It'd be like you cheating on the household money or uh, going out and getting a job without telling me. Or, or meeting an ex-boyfriend on the sly. You know, I hate those things, so you, you wouldn't do them. Just the same. Uh, making a fuss over a bikini is ridiculous. Well, and as far as those other things you mentioned are concerned, well, there could always be extenuating circumstances. You women really stick together, don't you? You never admit you're wrong. I mean, even about a long-established principle. Well, what's wrong with a woman wearing a bikini? Lots of them do. And lots of women do those other things you mentioned, too, but well, it doesn't exactly make them sinners. Well, some husbands don't go for it. Like me and Tom, for instance. Ha, ha. And that's Tom and I. <laughs> Like you ha ha when we're right in the middle of a serious philosophical discussion. Ha ha. I think that little remark calls for an apology. I'm not going to apologize to a man who can't see the humor in a little ha ha. Well, I don't think much of a wife who implies that her husband is a square without a sense of humor. I'll see you later. Where are you going? You haven't had your dinner yet. I'll eat at the bowling alley. What's with him? He's angry because I gave him a simple little ha-ha. Well, there's an old Cantonese saying, a wife should never give the husband the ha-ha until they've been married at least a year. <laughs> oh, hi, Kate. Hi, Dad. Welcome home. Oh, thanks. I uh, just ran into Robbie out there. He said he was taking off to go bowling. Yeah, he took off all right. For a pretty silly reason. Uh, he did mention something about a ha-ha. It was more than that. We had an awful argument, all because Tom Bridges' wife bought a bikini without telling him. Well, Katie, I wouldn't take it all so seriously. I mean, after all, it's Tom's wife's problem. And mine. Well, I got a job today, and I, I can't tell Robbie because it's against his principles. Just like it's against Tom's principles about the bikini. Well, if he knows, it'll spoil everything. Absolutely everything. <laughs> Kitty, would you mind slowing down? I mean, I just got off of the freeway, and that's confusing enough. <laughs> well, I'm taking a part-time job to earn enough money so I can buy him a Swiss calendar watch for our fourth-week wedding anniversary. Uh-huh. 
And uh, what happened to the bikini? Well, that's another subject. <laughs> well, I'm going to be a waitress during lunch at the Pink Azalea. And, well, it's only for a week. Uncle Charlie knows, but no one else. At least you could have honked your horn, Steve, and let me know you're back home. I'm home, Charlie. Nobody tells me anything around here. <laughs> you sure bowl fast. <laughs> I think I'll go up and unpack. Honey, I, I'm sorry I blew my stack. Ethel's bikini is none of our business. I'll never ha ha you again. We just got a call from Millie, our cigarette girl. She's in Las Vegas. Las Vegas? What's she doing there? She eloped last night. Won't be back for a week. Probably right after the divorce. <laughs> oh, fine. So who will we get at the last minute that can fill that costume? Very close. Here I am. Oh, uh, why don't you uh, just put this on, my dear, and then report back to us. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Hi, Robbie. Where's Katie? Well, oh, beats me. Doesn't she always have lunch with you? Well, no, not this week. She said she had to catch up on her lab work during lunch hours. No, you must have misunderstood her. Katie finished her lab work last week. All of it? Well, every bit. Well, she said lab work. Lab work, lab work. Oh, I got it figured out. Professor Morgan invited a bunch of his students down to Kelsey Chemical this week to watch an experiment he's doing. Oh, well, that's where she is. Well, uh, I've got to get a bite to eat. Hey, uh, listen, how about uh, being my guest? You're kidding. You mean you're going to spring for lunch? You're always broke. Well, I bowled high game last night, and first prize was a fancy lunch for two. Great. Where are we going? It's a new spot, but we've got to go by my house and pick up some ties. Oh, it's that fancy, huh? Oh, the fanciest. You know, Rob, it's nothing personal, but uh, I kind of wish it was Ethel I was taking to lunch instead of you. You call her off? How about? Well, I tried that, and she wouldn't return that bikini. And any wife of mine that's going to parade around half-dressed in public is going to be taught a lesson. <laughs> you know what, Tom? Not with you. Excellent. Well, you look lovely, my dear. You expect me to wait on tables like this? Oh, oh, oh you're not the waitress. Uh, uh, our cigarette girl didn't show up, and you're going to take her place for the luncheon shift. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't do that, Mr. Franson. Oh, but we're stuck. I mean, besides, it's just for one day, it, until we get a regular cigarette girl. Actually, you should be very happy. You'll make twice as much in tips. See, uh, think of it this way. It's, it's a lot less revealing than, uh, say, a bikini, which you young ladies wear all the time. A bikini. Well, if it's only for one day... Well, fine. Uh, if you get your tray over there, the uh, young lady will uh, fill you in. Cigarette? Cigarette? Back to those. Keep the change, doll. Oh, this is it. A... Run along, doll. They're giving me a huge tip. I can't accept it. He's one of our regulars. He just had an oil well come in. If you don't take it, you'll spoil his fun. Oh, I wouldn't want to do that. Cigarettes? Uh, table for two, please. This way, please. Prices. What do we care? It's the bowling alley's money, Rob. What do I owe you, miss? 
that would be 40 cents. Hey, you have a real sexy voice. Please don't say that, sir. Up, boys! <laughs> Katie! Hello, Rob. Tom? Uh, excuse me, I'm very busy. Just a moment. I want to know what my wife... Don't make a scene. I want to know what my wife is doing in this, this bunny outfit. I'm in failure, and I work here. Not anymore. You don't. You're, you're getting dressed, and we're going home. Sir, if you don't stop annoying this young lady, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Well, you don't have to ask. I'm on my way. Come on, son. Rob! 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 Well, I wasn't going to tell you. Well, there's a perfectly logical explanation why I'm working here. Well, I don't want to hear it. Well, then I won't tell you. Gee, Rob, I sure feel better about Ethel now. At least she was going to wear her bikini on the beach. <laughs> Fresh college kid. Come on in back, honey, and rest for a while. I can't. I have to make some more money. Cigarettes? Cigarettes? Come on. Boys? Charlie? Where is everybody? Oh, hi, Ernie. Oh, hi, Dad. Where are you going in such a hurry? Well, I have to get some empty glasses for the wall. Glasses for the wall? Yeah, we're bugging Katie and Robbie's room. They're having a fight and we can't hear too good. <laughs> what thing? I'm not working there anymore. Will you kindly lower your voice? I don't want the other members of the family to know that we're having a battle. <laughs> we're going to stay here and battle until we solve this thing. Yes, I'm home. You know, I'm really surprised at you two. What are you surprised about? Well, listening in on a private conversation between a husband and a wife. Look, I could settle this whole mishmash. Only I'm a man of honor. <laughs> you surprised me, you Chip. No, wait a minute. Katie made me promise I wouldn't say anything to Robbie about why she took that job. Well, I didn't promise. A silly argument like that can lead to something serious. Where'd he go, Dad? He was straightening those kids out. But you said you were one father-in-law who was never going to act like a mother-in-law. That was going to be a rule, you said. There are exceptions to every rule, Ernie. Well, I'm coming with you. I'm her brother. You stay right here. And all of you stop that. Not important. Not important. Listen, when a wife refuses to explain to her... Rob. Yeah? Can I come in? Well, we're, uh, we're sort of busy right now, Dad. We're having an argument. Well, I thought you wanted to keep it quiet. That's what I want to talk to you about. Now, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, it's all right to have an occasional argument. It's uh, part of being married. In a way, it's healthy blowing off steam. Can he blow off steam? Why, you're not so bad yourself. But there's one part of marriage that can be sort of dangerous, and that's uh, when a husband and wife keep secrets from one another. Now, the secret I had in mind is uh, your fourth week wedding anniversary coming up next Sunday. Oh, by the way, Kitty, did you know that Rob uh, bought you a gold charm with a diamond in it? Dad, you just spoiled the whole thing. Oh, well, as long as I spoil it, why don't you give it to her now? Now? Well, sure, it can be your uh, third and a half week wedding. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you let the cat out of the bag, I, I guess I have to. Uh, here it is, honey. There's an inscription on the back. What a beautiful thought. We haven't read it yet. Well, coming from you, it has to be a beautiful thought. May this anniversary be filled with joy. Katie, as long as we're on the subject of secrets, why don't you tell Robbie what you're getting him? Well, I bought it already. When they made me a cigarette girl instead of a waitress, I earned a lot more money. All in one day, with the help of a nice gentleman and a darling old oil wheel. I hope you like it, Robbie. It's 
wonderful. There's nothing on the back of it yet. There will be as soon as I can think of something nice to put on it. Well, just say, with love to my fat-headed husband. Mush! <laughs> well, the game's over, fellas. Turn in your glasses. Might as well go downstairs and film with milk. Good idea. I hope we don't have to go through this on their fifth week anniversary. <laughs> hey, uh, how about a kiss? Missed everybody this morning, huh? Yeah, the kids took off in their usual rush for school. Well, I stayed up late working on those priority plans, and I just slept in. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do that. I kind of miss our breakfast conversations. Well, if you feel deprived, Steve, I'll fill you in. <laughs> Say, didn't I smell bacon cooking? Oh, oh you sure did. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, Robbie and Katie aren't doing anything interesting. Did you make any toast? Sure. Help yourself. Ernie has got tramp enrolled in some obedience class that a dog food company is running over at the park. Oh, here's your orange juice. <laughs> and wait till you hear this. Chip is going to get himself matched up with some girl by using a computer. Oh, well, that's not too unusual these days, Charlie. Oh, now look, Steve. When I was in the Merchant Marine, we didn't need any machine to tell us who was good looking and who wasn't. We use the good old eyeballs. Well, Charlie, uh, computer dating doesn't deal with just physical appearances, you know. Well, I still say you can't get that certain romantic spark on the say-so of a bunch of nuts and bolts. Say, so, uh, is there any marmalade? Uh... Oh, sure. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have the feeling that I'm eating leftovers. I told you they had a rush off, Steve. I can't afford to waste the food. Well, I suppose it's all right as long as we're keeping the germs in the same family. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, no, Mrs. Fry, thanks. How about a half a fried egg? <laughs> no, Mrs. Is... <laughs> all right, kids, the obedience school will run every day this week. You'll have a chance to train your dog with me personally. No, I'm sorry that we can only do this one at a time. But just keep your place in line every day until your turn comes up. <laughs> now, kids, let me... Where do I go? <laughs> this obedient school's for dogs. I know. <laughs> well, I think that's a chicken. Oh. If you went home and got your dog, it might help. Thanks a lot, mister. <laughs> I still don't see why you guys are involved with computers. One of our teachers is getting a degree in something to do with computers. So he decided to experiment with our class. That's why we're filling out these questionnaires. Yeah. He's going to feed the answers into the computer with a bunch of answers from a girl's school across town. And match us up. I sure hope I get a blonde. Well, I'm glad I got you all together because we're going to have dinner at 7 o'clock tonight and I don't want any stragglers. Oh, you can forget that order. I thought you were family. Uncle Charlie, you never met my friend Carl Murchison. Carl, this is my Uncle Charlie O'Casey. Glad to meet you, Mr. O'Casey. Murchison? I knew a hack driver in Singapore named Murchison. Used to deal uh, blackjack on the side. Any relation? I don't think so, Mr. O'Casey. Carl's going to be hanging around here a while. We're working on this computer project together. You want to know what I think about computers? In my day, we made up our own mind. We didn't run around asking a bunch of wires if the fat-headed moon was out. And I want to tell you another thing about these computers that you don't know. There's the bell for round one. Mitchell, eight for the left 
packages. Now you got the word. I've been waiting to see this fight for three weeks. And I don't want any noise of any kind. And that goes for all of you. Okay, Uncle Charlie. You really better be quiet. One of those guys is Uncle Charlie's favorite fighter. Hey, Chip, tell us more about the computer experiment. We're just starting to fool around with that stuff at school. Keep the racket down over there. You better cool it till the fight's over. It's a one round knockout. What do you mean he's out? That's my boy on the canvas. I didn't even see it. We're going to get hollered. <laughs> hi, Uncle Charlie. Uh, hi. Hey, guess what? They towed the school away. No, we got our cards on the girls we're matched up with by the computer. We're going to call them to see what they sound like. You modern kids really can't think for yourselves, can you? In my day, we used our own masculine instinct to get a date. It's like asking your car to go out and pick an accident for you. <laughs> I got the only uncle around who hates computers. Go ahead. Now today we'll try to show how simple it is to train your dog to stay in one position until given a command to move. Now I'm sorry that hey. I only heard this one. Oh, oh hi. Well, what you got there? His name is Fido. <laughs> You're getting closer. Is he a dog? Well, uh, not exactly. Dogs eat carrots because Fido eats carrots feel good. Why don't you go home and get something that looks more like this? Thanks, mister. <laughs> she really sounds groovy. Okay, Debbie. I'll see you tonight, then. Goodbye. Boy, I can't wait to hear what my girl sounds like. We have the same kind of interest. I forgot to ask her if she was blonde. Boy, you really got a blonde hang-up. Maybe it was something in your childhood. Hello, X21ZY female? This is X21ZY male. You mean my computer date? Hi. My real name's Chip Douglas. I'm Marlene Hendricks. I saw how our cards matched. We seem to have a lot in common. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I'm gonna hit her for a date. Hey, Marlene, I know we're just supposed to go to the computer picnic together, but how about me coming over your place tonight so we can sort of get acquainted? That's fine with me, Chip. Bring your books. Maybe we'll study together. Okay, Marlene. I'll see you tonight, then. Goodbye. I'm getting really excited about this whole thing. Yeah, but suppose something goes wrong. Well, what can go wrong? A computer knows what it's doing. Yeah, but what does a computer care about the color of a girl's hair? Chip, I think we're in big trouble. You're beginning to sound like Uncle Charlie. I'm putting my money on the computer. He even picked out a pretty name. Marlene. Marlene. <laughs> Catch part of the family. Ten minutes more, Steve, and these legally would have been declared leftovers. Oh, come on, Charlie, no more of that. I'll admit we do this as our frugal, but uh, let's not overdo it. Huh? Boy, then, you'd really be surprised how old Tramps move along in obedience class. Well, that's great, Ernie. Admit it, Ernie. Tramps likable, but he isn't any Da Vinci of the dog kingdom. How can you say stuff like that, Uncle Charlie? For one thing, I found him trying to eat a washcloth this morning. So? And when he couldn't eat it, he tried to bury it in the carpet. That ain't exactly a sign of brilliance. Yeah, only I bet Tram didn't think it was so smart when you stopped up the garbage disposal with a sock the other day. Well, that, that was an accident. You know, if this is a sample of the uh, conversation I've been missing, I think I'll go back to sleeping late again. Chipper, you haven't said a word. Uh, something wrong? It's nothing much, Dad. 
He's got a symptom of the new generation, Steve. Computer blues. Oh, yeah. My computer date's about six feet tall. Well, Chipper, I hope you didn't let the girl know how you feel. Well, she's not ugly or anything. The guys are sure gonna kid me. Well, Chip, I don't think that's what you should be concerned about. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You don't let some impersonal contraption play Cupid for you. Well, I'm stuck now. I'd sure like to dump her. Chip, uh, I think you and I would better have a little talk about this after breakfast. But, Dad, she can look right down on the top of my head. You know, Chip, I'm really uh, surprised at your attitude. I mean, you're taking this girl's height as a blow aimed directly at you. Dad, did you ever feel short? No. No, not lately, Chip, but uh, I have felt inadequate and clumsy in my time. Remember how I used to mark how tall we were with a pencil in the closet? Yeah. Well, I haven't passed my pencil mark in about eight months. Well, maybe you've just slowed up for a while, Chip. Or, uh... Well, anyway, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm sure I don't have to remind you that many great men like Napoleon weren't great because of their height. I don't mind if you remind me. Well, it's true, Chip. I mean, uh, physical stature has nothing to do with how a man is measured. Or to put it more simply, how tall a man is doesn't matter. Except the short guys. All right, let's try a different approach. Now, the computer phase of this experiment is over. Now you're dealing with human emotions. You mean go to the picnic with Marlene, forget about the tall stuff and don't hurt her feelings. That's right, Chip. Hey, Dad. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When I have a kid of my own someday, you think I'll be able to talk to him, sensible and smart, like you talk to me? Well, Chip, you'd have to sort of play it by ear, but uh, I have a feeling you'll do just fine. Today's lesson will be the proper feeding of your pets. Your dog's health is governed by the food he eats, just as your health is governed by the food you eat. Hi, sir. Well, how are you today, kid? Even you Guess what you I know. got. Now, when somebody comes to your house, what? His door, and He's got a key and everything. <laughs> well, uh, you got one now that's already trained pretty good. Why don't you stay here in line with me and maybe we can figure something out. You're neat, mister. Hello, is Chip Douglas here? Yeah. Well, come on in. Thank you. Do you want to sit down or something? Fine. I'm his brother, Ernie. I'll go tell him you're here. Ernie. Could you tell me, is Chip wearing boots, you know, high heels and stuff? No. The last time I looked, he wasn't any taller than he usually is. Was someone at the door? Yeah. I think it's Chip's computer day. Marlene? Why, you were right, Chip. I bet she could pick dates off a palm tree without a ladder. I wonder why she's here. Quit saying things like that. The girl might hear you. Well, I don't think she'd be too surprised about being tall, Uncle Charlie. She probably noticed it a long time ago. <laughs> it's real nice to see you, Marlene. Look, Chip, it was kind of fun going through that computer thing. But I don't think we're the perfect pair. Oh, sure we are. We're interested in all kinds of junk together. Look what you're doing right now. Well, did I say something wrong? No, Chip. But you're staring up at me. I got some thicker shoes upstairs. Who cares? Let's be honest, Chip. I'm just too tall for you. We should have said so when we first met. I thought you'd get all sensitive. I'm not sensitive about being tall one bit. It's just that I feel more comfortable with a taller boy. I know what you mean. We're still supposed to go together to the picnic. Look, Chip, we can talk to each other honestly. Don't you know a taller boy from your school that, well, maybe we could... A switch date? Hey, Marlene, that's a groovy idea. I know some guys that might go for this. I'll walk you home, then I'll come back and get started. Fine. Steve, do you know what those kids are doing in the living room? Well, no, but from the sound of your voice, it must be something pretty awful. <laughs> They're holding a regular slave market. No. Yes. All right, I got an out-of-sight little girl here that any of you guys would love to be with. Well, if she's so great, 
Why don't you keep her for yourself? Because she isn't blonde. Now, I've got a blonde, but she's a little plump and she hates rock and roll music. As long as she's blonde, I can learn to live with the hang-ups. <laughs> I've been matched with a girl that, although has a marked interest in English literature, nevertheless hasn't the least inclination toward physics. I extracted this shortcoming through an in-depth conversation. What's she look like, Norman? Relatively groovy. <laughs> well, I've got a math major here. Consider it a deal. They're still down there, Steve. This is the closest thing to Bob Berricks that ever happened underneath this roof. Did you watch your language, Uncle Charlie. I'm still kind of young. Ernie, it's past your bedtime. When it's past my bedtime this early, there must be something good going on. <laughs> but I really came to ask Dad for a favor. Oh. Now, what is it, Ernie? Well, I'm not going to go beating around the bushes. You're not? No. I've got a really good reason for this favor. Mm -hmm. Ernie, why do you always have to go to your dad for a favor? Why don't you come to me once in a while? What do you want? Can I have three dollars? <laughs> Speak to you, Dad. <laughs> All right, Ernie, three dollars, huh? Of course, this will mean giving up your allowance for the next two weeks. It'll be worth it. I'll tell you about it when I work out the deal. Fine. Just remember, don't ask me for any more money until the two weeks are up, huh? Okay. And Uncle Charlie, his barbarics means chips trading girls all over the place. I already know about that. <laughs> Thanks again, Dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so long, you guys. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Huh? It's just you and me, Marvin. Yeah. And I know you have a tall girl to trade. Right. I just want to find out what kind of bargain I'm getting. Words can't describe her, Chip. The guys our age don't say that type of junk about girls. Really? You take a hundred girls and rate them on looks, and Angela Mason would be right up there in the top two percent. What's wrong with her, Marvin? If you don't believe me, take a look at this. Is this Angela? Man! I told you. How come you're trading away something like this? Are you sick? Look, Chip. You say your girl's tall, and besides, I'd like to do a friend a favor. Yeah, but I can't believe that. I can believe. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Dad couldn't get mad at me, Uncle Charlie. Marlene said herself she didn't want to go out with me. I keep reading about how you guys are going to be the next leaders of our country. Do you mind making a little more sense before you take over? You just worked out a deal where everybody gets the kind of girl they want. So, you didn't need the computer, right? I guess not. I wonder if your generation has got every guy my age running around in circles. I'd like to keep talking to you, Uncle Charlie, but I have to check out my new date. I'd give you a little advice on how not to hurt her feelings and to mind your manners. But, uh, I don't think I want to get involved. Goodbye. <laughs> Other people may be frightened by your dog, even though you know he's friendly. So what we have to do is teach our dog the proper behavior. Couldn't find anything to bring this time. Your dog's health well, is covered. Well, I got something worked out for you. Just as your health is what? By the food you eat. All right, kids. Did you ever hear of a dog pound? Uh-uh. Well, so I'll explain to later. Here. But your parents will let you keep him. Tina's okay. starting to think I'm going to cry. Yeah, me too. I'm Chip Douglas. Angela's date for the computer picnic. Fine. Won't you come in, Chip? Angela's studying right in there, Chip. Angela, you have company. Hi, Angela. My name's Chip Douglas. Hi, Chip. Marv called to tell me I'd been traded. Boy, I hate to embarrass you, but you're even better looking than in your picture. Thanks. Why? I bet we'll have a ball at the picnic. You won't want to go with me, Chip. What's the matter? 
You'll understand when you come to this side of the desk. A skiing accident. It'll be on for two months, so if you want to back out of the picnic, start backing. Look, we might not win the potato sack race, but I only go to picnics to eat anyway. Really? No kidding. You'll be the first to find my cab. Stay tuned. Twice as Nice Mornings continues with My Three Sons in TV Land. My Three Sons in TV Land. Right, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't think it proved much. Angela and I didn't have one thing in common. We got along great. <laughs> Every Sunday it looks like we got hit with a blizzard around here. <laughs> Where's the sports section? Well, Dad's got it over his face. How do you like that? He's got the box scores on the other side. <laughs> I'll get it. Charlie, what are you doing? <laughs> Did you give my boy this puppy, young man? Yeah, but he had his shocks and everything. What is it, Ernie? Well, that three dollars was for the pound, so I could get this little kid a dog. On account, he kept showing up with rabbits and chickens and junk. He didn't bite him or anything, did he, mister? Oh, no, son. We've been looking all over the neighborhood to thank you. It was one of the most unselfish acts I've come across in a long time. Well, we finally found him, Roger. Yeah, what's your name, mister? Ernie. That's your name for now on. Come on, Ernie, come on. Well, thank you for dropping by. Oh, well, thank you for having such a son. Uh, well, Ernie, we're all very proud of you. Boy, yeah, Ernie, that was sure nice. Boy, boy, yeah, yeah, really I'll, I'll just shake your hand. <laughs> Out's building up your muscles. A couple of years ago, I would have said, hey, me. I think you're just taking advantage of me. <laughs> I'll say my goodbyes now, Steve. I got to put this house in order. Okay, goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye. Are there any last minute instructions before you leave, Dad? Well, Katie, I would uh, like you and Riley to keep an eye on things for me. Are those the things, Dad? <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you take over my role with Chip and Ernie while I'm gone. Give Charlie a chance to relax. He's pretty busy with this new house, you know. You mean you want to track his parents? Well, you, uh, you could put it that way, yeah. Well, I've got a plane to catch. Hey, give us great practice for our future family. Well, now, don't get too psychological about the whole thing, Rob. Just uh, give Charlie a hand, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dad, wait a second. How are we going to get him to respect our authority? Oh, uh, Chip and Ernie. Now, look, I uh, want you fellas to listen to Katie and Robbie while I'm up in San Francisco, okay? Why? Well, they get pretty boring, Dad. All they talk about is drapes and casseroles and junk. <laughs> uh, that means that we'll be taking over for him, Ern. Like our parents? If you guys have a problem or something, you'd come to us. Well, I got a problem, Dad. Could you stay for a minute while I practice on Rob? Well, uh, make it quick, Ern. Well, the Deerings have drove to Palm Springs. And... The Deerings have driven to Palm Springs. <laughs> Boy, is he going to be correcting my English or listening to my problem? A uh, little of both, I hope, Ern. <laughs> well, I've got to go. Okay, I'm dead. Call you when I get there. Have a nice Bye. time. Bye. 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 Uh, Ern? What's the problem? Well, since Gordon Deering's gone, and he's the only friend I have, I don't have anyone to play with. Oh. Uh, well, we've, we've only been in California a short time. You'll be meeting some new people. 
Yeah, well, in that same short time we've been here, you got married, and Chip has about 42 girlfriends. Well, uh, it'll work out, believe me. I didn't want to say anything, but I don't think Robbie's ready to be our father. <laughs> Mike. Well, nice to know you. You want to be friends? Not especially. I'm looking for a kid the right size. Well, I'm about the same as you. It's this way, kid. I need practice throwing rocks. I just don't even have to a good foot this morning. Well, well, maybe we can go somewhere after school and throw a team camp. That ain't the same. There's more. That's not a live kid. <laughs> well, you can't throw rocks at me. I wear glasses. Take them off. I have to see you. You don't have to see me. <laughs> well, that's not good. Still, we'll put a coffee can on top of your head, and I'll knock it off with the rock. <laughs> Mike, I need to meet some new kids. But this sounds a little extreme. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Anytime I miss and hit you, you can belt me one. Fair? Fair. Good. See outside after school. I'll bring the rocks and the coffee can. Yeah, and I'll bring the bandages. <laughs> so that's what Dad said. Katie and I will be taking over in the child raising department. Are you sure you know what you're in for? I've been their brother for years. It shouldn't be anything I can't handle. Uh, you dreamer, you. Beautiful. What was that? That's just what I'm going to ask whoever was on the other end of this rock. Hi, everybody. Oh, this here's my new friend, Mike. Hi. You must be the one that filled my meatballs with broken glass. I didn't mean to hit the window. Well, I didn't think so. I was just trying to knock the coffee can off Ernie's head. With a rock? Uh, Mike, do you live around here? Yeah, over on the next block. Well, Mike's got all sorts of neat stuff over his house. With BB guns, firecrackers, and two jars full of old lizard heads. <laughs> Well, look, boys, uh, if you promise to lay off the BB guns and the firecrackers, uh, I think I'll let you go on and play, okay? Well, gee, thanks. Come on, Mike. That kid is trouble with a capital T. He didn't even say goodbye. Hello? Oh, hi, Steve. You there already? I'll get it on the extension. I, uh, just wanted to let you know I arrived here in one piece. Hi, Dad. You ought to know that everything's going just fine. Except for the busted window, I'm not going to say another word. <laughs> what was that about a busted window? A slight accident, Dad. Everything's under control. My meatballs are full of broken glass, but don't let me butt in. <laughs> Am I wrong, or is Charlie describing a minor catastrophe? Ernie is going around with a future convict. But my mouth is closed. Doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Robbie, what's going on? Ernie found a new friend named Mike, and Uncle Charlie and Mike didn't happen to hit it off. What, are you sure this boy's all right for Ernie? Now, listen, Dad. It's nothing to worry about. I told him to lay off the BB guns and the firecrackers. Now, I don't want to run up your phone bill, so uh, just relax, okay? So long. Rob? Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> Sure is nice of you to play catch with me, Chips. It's okay. A sensitive kid like me can't stand to be alone. Well, you get your new friend, Mike. Yeah. He's coming over pretty soon. You won't hate him, will you, Chip? Any friend of yours is a friend of mine, Ernie. Hey, Ernie! Hey, Mike. This is my brother, Chip. Pleased to meet you, Mike. Yes, me too, for me too. I brought over some steam so we could take a little target practice with me. Hey, you guys shouldn't go around breaking bottles. Maybe you ought to tell your good brother to go in the house or me. I don't want any bottles broken in our backyard. 
Well, I knew you'd start to hate him, Chip. Hey, kid! Mike, you're gonna have to leave. Who's gonna make me? Why don't you go and don't come back till you know how to act. Boy, thanks, Chip. Now I don't have any friends at all, again. <laughs> You really think Mike's that bad, aren't you? He's sure not any good for Ernie. Okay, Chip, you're a real Arnold Benedict. That's Benedict Arnold. No, it isn't. Arnold Benedict is a kid in my class that snitches a lot. I was worried about you. I think that if both Chip and Uncle Charlie are opposed to Mike, uh, you know, Katie, what worries me is total rejection. Yes. Yes, you're right. One has security, us, and the other. Who knows what his home is like? All I know is Mike's a rotten kid. <laughs> oh, not really, Chip. He just has this fetish for breaking glass. What are you He was just here. <laughs> Mike simply seems to be a boy's boy. There's a strong drive there. There's a stimulus behind every strong drive. Mike's a rotten kid, that one. <laughs> hey, uh, Ernie, please stay awake. Huh? We're trying to work this thing out. You know, I can't help but feel we should give Mike another chance. Well, it's a reward syndrome, sort of. <laughs> Sounds like a little instinctive motherhood coming through, Katie. Well, I think you're being too lenient. Mike's just plain old rock. <laughs> well, maybe Katie's right. You should listen to Ernie's views. Ernie... Hey, where's Ernie? 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 With acting parents, we have to take in all opinions. Well, sometimes a parent has to exert a despotic sort of authority. Mike's a rotten kid. <laughs> hey, Ernie, try to stay awake until we solve your problem, huh? Ernie. <laughs> What's happening? What's all the noise about? The sun's not even up yet. Someone's yelling out front. Ernie! Hey, Ernie! Ernie! Oh, Robbie, you have to come here. Look at that sweet, innocent face. Are you kidding? That's Mike. But they won't believe that an angelic face like that belongs to a bad little boy. Mike, there's a key under the mat. Let yourself in the front door and I'll send Ernie right down. Thanks, lady. Hey, nobody's going to get mad and send me home again, are they? No, Mike, nobody's going to send you home. Well, I hope we're doing the right thing. We are, honey. I'm sure of it. something, but ain't no he. I'm a she. <laughs> My name is Michelle. Mike is a girl? That's right, Steve. We found it out right after she blew up the vase. <laughs> well, Mike sounds like a problem child in either gender. Well, there has to be something to cause her to behave like that, Dad. Oh, hi, Katie. You're on, too, huh? Yeah, she's in the living room. I'm upstairs, Dad. We just wanted to get your views on all this before we go ahead and try to solve this situation. 
Rob, you're not getting too psychological about this now, are you? We're all worried about Mike now, Steve. I feel terrible about hollering at a little girl like that. Uncle Charlie's a little guilty. I am not guilty. I just feel terrible. What has Ernie got to say about all this? Ernie hates Mike now that she's a girl. I know it sounds stupid for us to get all involved, Steve. Uncle Charlie is reacting to a guilt feeling. He's just being psychological, Steve. <laughs> Robbie, Charlie, uh, could you debate after we get off the long distance rates? <laughs> I'm appointing Katie as spokesman for this committee, if the rest of you don't mind. Dad, it's simply that we're worried about a mixed-up little girl, and we don't know what to do. Katie, <laughs> you just use your common sense, and I'm sure you can work this thing out. And if you need anything, call me again. Alone. <laughs> Why? All these puzzles say even a child can do but they don't tell you the child has to be a genius. Ernie! Ernie! Ernie, that sounds like your friend Mike. Hey, everybody forgets I'm back to not having any friends. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Can Ernie come out and play? I'll see Mike. Ernie, Mike wants you to come out and play. Well, I'm not going around with any girl. Hey, listen, Ernie. Well, tell her I got the blue bonnet play for an allergy. <laughs> Mike, Ernie can't play right now. You mean he won't? Ernie. My mind's made up. Robbie, we're going to have to do something about Mike. Like what? Like find out why she wears boys' clothes. What makes her so hostile, at the same time so pathetic. Yeah. We have to get Ernie to accept her. I'm afraid that little girl isn't accepted by anyone. I mean, somebody would have to go in there and investigate her home life. How sweet of you. Here's what I think you better do. <laughs> Come on in, Douglas. Well, 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 it sure is nice meeting one of Ernie's family. You know, I've heard a lot about him. Nice meeting you, Mr. Connor. Oh, call me Jack. Oh, uh, you can have your discussion with Mike as soon as that football game is over. We watch the pros every Sunday. It's kind of a family tradition. <laughs> well, what do you think, buddy? Ernie's brother dropped over to see you. Yeah, we gotta watch the game, Jack. Yeah, Mike calls me Jack most of the time. Pretty cute, huh? Yeah. The defensive line is really red-dogging. That quarterback better start throwing some short passes. Ain't that something? Mike's only nine years old. I bet she could quarterback a pro team with the best of them. Right, Tiger? Right, Jack. <laughs> Ain't she something, huh? Yeah, just great. Robbie's at Mike's right now, and he's going to bring her back here. You guys used to hate Mike. Now she's a girl. She's supposed to be neat or something. Girls have more feelings than boys. They're different. Oh, I knew they were different back about in first grade. <laughs> Uncle Charlie means that if you're nice to Mike, maybe we can help her. Well, do I have to play with her? We don't want to force you, but you really ought to. Well, if you're not going to force me, then I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, what do you mean you're not going to do it? Now, how come you don't want to play with Ernie? Because Ernie doesn't want to play with me. Well, Ernie will want to play with you now, Mike. He's discussing it with the family this very minute. I'll tell you what, Tiger. Supposing you go over and fool around at Ernie's for a while. Come back about five, and we'll go bowling. Okay, but if Ernie doesn't want to play with me, I'll smack him in the ear. Hey, watch it, buddy. <laughs> Run along. <laughs> Let's talk to you. Excuse me, Mike. Ernie's gone. He said, give me liberty or give me death, but don't give me any girl, and disappeared. This isn't good, Katie. I don't want her to find out she's being rejected again. What's going on? Uh, Mike, you better come with me. Robbie will get Ernie. Is Ernie lost or something? No, not really, Mike. You just go with Katie, okay? <laughs> Had it since I was a little girl. You mean you still like it now that you're a lady and everything? 
I think all girls like dolls, no matter how old they are. I don't like them. Is any of this stuff your husband? No, it's all mine. Who showed you how to use them? Well, actually, I never thought about it, Mike. You look like you probably knew how to be a girl ever since you were born. <laughs> no, not really. Of course, some people don't care about looking like a girl, even if somebody would show them. Mike, I want you to see something. You're not going to believe this. Take a look at that little girl. You know who that is? No. That's me. Boy, you sure are terrible looking then. <laughs> Wasn't I? You didn't know how to act like a girl or anything. That's right, Dad. I found out what makes Mike the way she is. Tell him about her old man not knowing how to raise a girl. But tell him we think we can help her. I can hear what's being said in the background, Rob. I'm pretty well filled in on the situation up to down. <laughs> the problem is, Dad, we can't find Ernie and we need him. Well, tell him we think if Ernie accepts Mike, she'll be okay. Tell him I'm going to call the police if we don't find Ernie. I heard what they said. <laughs> Rob, I think you have the problems reversed. First find Ernie and then help the little girl. Boy, it's getting in there. <laughs> us talking to your dad, and you knew you'd better come out, right? Wrong. I was going stir-crazy in there. <laughs> By the way, Dad, we found Ernie. Uh, so I hear. <laughs> Listen, young man. Mike's with Katie, and we want you to go in there and be nice to her. Well, give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> Don't give me... Ernie, cut it out. Oh, sure. Hang on. Ernie, Dad wants to talk to you. Come on. Go on. Talk to your dad. Come on. Hurry up. Come on. Move. Come on. Come on. Do I have to go in there, Dad? All the guys will call me Lover Boy Douglas. <laughs> Ernie, all we're asking is that you be nice to a little girl. It doesn't mean that you have to marry her. Hey, that's right. Boy, you sure understand kids, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Ernie. Now say goodbye to everyone for me. And tell Charlie I'll be home tomorrow. Okay. Well, bye, Dad. Well, I'm gonna go in there and be nice to Mike. How did he get you to do that so quickly? Well, with all you guys being parents and everything, I was getting mixed up. Plus, Dad knows how to handle me. Hey, Mike! Well, come on out and play! Ernie, I'd like you to meet Michelle. I'm sorry, Ernie. I don't think I'd like to play with boys right now. Thank you. <laughs> well, look who's here. Well, well, all ready to go, Ern, huh? Yeah. Sorry. She's going to have her dad drive her over here. Then you get to take us to the dance. Lucky you. <laughs> oh, that's fine, Ernie. I'm so pleased you're taking Michelle, Ernie. Shows real maturity. Yeah. Well, I guess that's my date. I'll uh, be right with you, Ernie. Are you ready, Ernie? Oh, yeah. Well, let's go. <laughs> well, it uh, may not be the love of the century, but uh, it's a start. 